30th of March 2010, a milestone for the Large Hadron Collider, the most powerful particle accelerator in the world, the day the LHC started up at unprecedented energy levels. Since then, particle collisions continue to occur inside the detectors and their analysis holds the promise of new physics discoveries. In today's program, we will review the performance of the machine and talk about its mode of operation, which is undergoing a certain change. All this with Steve Myers, Director for Accelerators and Technology, and Yves Schutz, physicist in the ALICE experiment. Hello and welcome. Thanks for being with us today. There are two people missing for this program. François, Stéphane, where are you? And now we are now inside Microcosm, one of CERN's permanent exhibitions. The LHC accelerates and collides protons at high energy. Elementary particles created by these collisions will help us understand better the birth of the universe. François, how do we accelerate particles? We are using cavities in which electric fields are accelerating charged particles. Protons, which are positively charged, are attracted by a negative charge and repulsed by a positive one. By repeating this process over a distance, we accelerate the particles. See you, Anna. See you in a short while. Welcome, François. Welcome, Stéphane. Hello, Thanks Anna. for being Hello, with Anna. us. So, Steve, um, first of all, the LHC has performed remarkably well. Um, beyond all expectations, what can you tell us about its performance? Well, it's been a fantastic almost two years. Uh, when we started on March 30th, uh, 2010, we started with a very low rate of events generation. And at the end of the run this year, we improved that by about a factor of uh, nearly six million, um, which is phenomenal. But, of course, we started at a very low value. Um, during the course of this year, we have improved the rate of events by a factor of 30. And the total integrated luminosity, which is the important, uh, important number for the, for the experiments, that has gone up to a factor of something like 5.6 times what we expected for this year. Saying beyond expectations is an way, understatement. Way, way, way beyond expectations. Yeah. <laughs> so regarding the LHC performance, the video team meant, went to meet Professor Lucio Rossi, who managed the construction of the LHC magnets and who is very proud of the machine's performance. Uh, LAC is the prototype of itself, of itself, and LAC is not alone. Its performance depends from the whole chain of accelerator of CERN. I am among the person that has built this car, the engineer that built this car, that have designed this car. Now this car is in the hand of the Schumacher, of the Vettel, of the pilot of the LAC. They are learning how to use the car, and actually they, even if, they are going even faster than what we thought. So this is a good point of the pilot. They are very good. They, we can give them the, the Grand Prix. They won the, our Grand Prix, Formula One. But to me, also the car has been very well conceived and built. So Steve, maybe a reaction on what we just heard? Well, fortunately, we don't have to pay these guys the salaries which Schumacher gets anyway. So. <laughs> but it's a and good I hope analogy. they don't crash this car either. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, Eve, this wonderful gathering of collisions is good news for the experiments and notably for Alice. Uh, what does it mean concretely? More data? Well, uh, certainly, as you can imagine, this is an eagerly awaited uh, seasonal uh, event by, the, uh, uh, by not only the Alice, but the heavy iron community. And particularly this year, since uh, LHC promises a lot, lot more collision, factor 10, factor 50, <laughs> shall see. And that means, of course, uh, many, many more uh, data. And that gives us opportunity to do a very careful uh, selection of the events of interest for our uh, studies. Of course, these events are rare. So that's why we need the, the selection and many, many events probability of detecting them. Exactly. In Thank you. François, you're going to explain to us how we measure the performance <coughs> of a machine like this. Yes, yeah, so let's try to explain luminosity in less than one minute, but as it's luminosity, let's put on the sunglasses. In the LHC, particles are accelerated in order to make them collide inside the four detectors. Ultimately, the LHC will accelerate 2,800 bunches, each containing approximately 100 billion protons. Each bunch is few centimeters long and is thinner than a hair. Each time two bunches of 100 billion protons meet, only 20 collisions occur.
But as there are 2,800 bunches accelerated at a speed close to the speed of light, it is possible to generate close to 600 million collisions per second. The number of collisions has to be very high in order to observe rare events. Luminosity is the measure used by the physicists to evaluate the efficiency of an accelerator and therefore its ability to produce a large number of collisions. The higher the luminosity, the higher the number of collisions per second. So no need to wear sunglasses and no risk of sunburn due to the luminosity of the LHC. Even a few days, the collisions with heavy lead ions will begin. Why does Alice study heavy ion collision? Uh, lead ion is the biggest chunk of matter than LHC can uh, accelerate. And by colliding this uh, chunk of matters, we will uh, use the energy available in the collision to heat up uh, matter, ordinary matter, which uh, the lead ions are uh, made of. And so the idea is to melt this matter and to form a new state of matter, which we call the quark-gluon plasma. And by studying this quark-gluon plasma, we will learn some uh, basics about, uh, for example, the strong interaction, which is this force which uh, builds uh, ordinary matter from elementary particles. We will learn about how uh, does matter acquire its mass. And we will learn about the primordial matter, which is at the origin of all the matter in the universe. But for two days prior to this, and for the first time, the LHC will produce proton heavy ion collisions. In what way is it interesting for physics? Well, uh, you know, let me use a metaphor. We are, we are trying to cook a soup, which is called the quark-gluon plasma. If you want to understand what the recipe of the, source, of the soup is, you need to know what the ingredients are. And we are, there are still a lot of mystery about the lead ion itself. What is this structure? And by colliding proton on lead, we will use uh, the proton as a probe of the lead ion and we will learn about our basic ingredient of our soup. Very versatile machine. Is this very difficult to do? Well, you mean proton, lead? Well, we'll be able to tell you much better after the present tests are finished. I know these guys are waiting impatiently, but uh, it's not going to be as easy as lead, lead. Uh, what we know by in, in a few weeks' time. Steve, it will work, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. François, you've prepared a summary of what's new at CERN this month. Yeah, at least I focused on two events in which CERN was involved. Uh, most of the time, we accelerate particles to make them collide. But to study antimatter particles, we have to slow them down to trap them. Uh, the 28th of September uh, this year saw the launch of the ELENA, El Extra Low Energy Antiproton Ring project. As its name suggests, uh, it is a ring that will be added to the current antiproton decelerator to slow down the antiprotons even more. Uh, the idea is to supply more antiprotons to the antimatter experiment. Among other things, these experiments produce anti-hydrogen uh, atoms in order to study them. Uh, ELENA will come on stream in 2016 and several institutes have expressed their interest in adding further experiments to the five ex existing ones. And finally, on 13 and 14 of October in Lund in Sweden, a representative of major European laboratories met to discuss novel approaches uh, to energy management uh, for large-scale research infrastructures, uh, to exchange information on best practice in the field and to enhance their cooperation. Uh, this is the first time that the major laboratories have got together to pool their expertise in this area. Uh, this, uh, the idea is to improve energy management and increase um, energy recovery in order to reduce the carbon footprint of all these major facilities. Uh, the two-day workshop was organized by CERN, the Europe Spallation Source and the European Association of National Research Facilities. Stefan, what's our destination today? Hey, I would like to show you the source. Follow me. Here I am, where everything begins, or rather where the LHC starts. I am at its proton source, the protons that will be collided in the LHC a little further down. The protons come out of a simple bottle of hydrogen, a bit like this one. An atom of hydrogen is made of a proton and an electron. We heat the hydrogen and then a strong electrical discharge is enough to separate them. It takes place here. The protons are then packed into bunches and then they are accelerated in the first element of the long chain that leads to the LHC, the LINAC2. One microsecond later, 34 meters away from here, they are already traveling at one third of the speed of light. The LHC generates several hundreds of millions of collisions of protons per second in the experiments. It sounds like a lot, but it's not. 
A bottle like this one is changed twice a year to ensure it's performing at the right pressure. But the LHC doesn't accelerate only protons. It also accelerates other kind of particles like lead ions. Let's see where they come from. Here, there is no bottle, but a simple tiny piece of lead. The principle remains more or less the same. We heat it up and an electrical discharge removes some electrons from the lead atoms, transforming them into ions, which can be accelerated through the accelerator's chain, then through the LHC. I'm stopping here. But the protons and the lead ions live for a journey of several millions of kilometers inside the LHC before they collide. See you! Welcome back, Stefan. Thank you. So, Steve, what is the plan for LHC operation next year? Will it improve on its performance yet again? Well, we all hope so, um, but not a factor of six million, um, maybe a factor of two. Um, so next year we start um, beginning, end of, beginning of March and we will continue running as we did this year, first of all with protons and then switch either to lead-lead or lead-proton at the end of the year. And following that we will go into a, a fairly long stop of the machine to upgrade some magnet interconnects so that we can increase the energy from 2014 onwards. An increase of energy. But then in the long t long longer term, sorry, what is the future of accelerators? In the longer term, the machine has been designed to run for at least 20 years. Um, the, the sort of furthest in the future upgrade we have uh, starts in 2033. So we have a long, long uh, period of running ahead of us uh, with hopefully increasing performance, energy and, and even colliding different types of, of, of ions. And in the interim, there are further upgrades to the machine? In the interim, there are many further upgrades. We, we aim to improve the luminosity by about a factor of uh, more than 10 from where we are now. Uh, that's the ultimate uh, factor of luminosity. We don't only talk about accelerators at CERN, and Stefan, you have some news for us from the other side of the world. Indeed, Anna. Particle physics turned a page of its history on the 30th of September with the closure of the Tevatron accelerator. This proton-antiproton -proton collider was in operation for 28 years in uh, Fermilab near Chicago. Before the LHC, it was the world's most powerful accelerator. There was much emotion in the machine's control room and in D0 and CDF experiments control rooms when the machine was shut down. In fact, it was filmed and even broadcast on the web. The most famous discovery of the Tevatron was the top quark, co sorry, top quark, which was the last quark to be discovered. The Tevatron has stopped, but there are still many data to be analyzed, and uh, the work carries on. Warm greetings to our friends in Fermilab. And, uh, and I have a new brochure for you today, which presents particle physics in the world and what's going on today. It's entitled Beacons of Discovery, and it explains the core objectives and implications of particle physics in our daily lives. Uh, this was launched at the 10th ICFA seminar uh, that was held uh, at CERN at the start of October, ICFA standing for International Committee for Future Accelerators. This brochure can be found on the web and you should see just here the web page where you could read this very interesting brochure. That's it. Thank you very much, Stefan. So Yves, what are Alice's objectives for the end of the year? Well, the first objective is to make the best use of every single collision which will be delivered by the LHC. And of course, take as much data as possible, as, our, as much as our detectors allow, and uh, as much as uh, computing resources allow. And now we have also, uh, be sure, uh, an army of uh, well-trained and well-motivated uh, scientists ready to analyze uh, this data. But don't expect any breakthrough uh, result before Christmas. So remember... Uh, Very impatient. Patience and fullness of time do more than... Uh, mm force and fury. Very well said, thank you very much. And a few final words from you, Steve? No, all I can say is I hope we, have, we continue with the success rate we've had. I, I keep my fingers crossed. This is what I always do on these occasions. Yeah. Seems to be working. Well, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you, Francois. Thank you, Stéphane. Thank, thank, thank you all for watching. If you want to see this program again, it will be available on our website and on YouTube. Otherwise, we can say see you next month.